Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about the NICU. So in case you haven't watched my other two videos that I've done, I'm a nurse and I have been a nurse for seven years and the last five of those years I've been in the NICU. I love what I do and I have the most rewarding job and I can't imagine doing anything else. So today's video is all about NICU 101, just the basics. I wanted to do this video for those parents that might be expecting a NICU stay or those parents who have just begun their NICU stay, as well as healthcare professionals that might be interested in the NICU or students who don't know what the NICU is all about. So NICU stands for a Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. There are different levels of NICUs starting at one and going up to four. A level one NICU is just a well baby nursery. So any hospital that delivers babies is gonna have some sort of well baby nursery. This is just for those babies who are born term with no issues who are not ill. The next level is gonna be a level two nursery or a special care nursery. These types of nurseries are gonna provide care for babies that are born at 32 weeks gestation and greater and greater than 1500 grams. There are situations where a baby might be born term who might just be breathing fast and need to be observed. Those babies can stay in a level two special care nursery for up to 24 hours for that observation. And if in that time the breathing issues don't resolve, then they might need to go to the next level of care. The next level is going to be a level three NICU. This is the type of NICU that I work in. So we take babies of any age, any weight. So babies born at 24 weeks all the way up to 41 and greater and babies born, you know, at four pounds, at eight pounds, 10 pounds, whatever it might be. We're able to provide care for those critically, critically ill infants um, and give them the care that they need. The last and highest level of neonatal intensive care unit is gonna be a level four. So if the care that the baby needs is greater than what a level three NICU can provide, they would go to a level four. You're also gonna see level four NICUs are typically in children's hospitals. And those are the NICUs that are gonna be able to provide surgical interventions for critically ill infants. So I know a lot of parents are probably asking, okay, well, what reasons would my baby need to go to a NICU? Okay, the most common reason any baby goes to the NICU is gonna be prematurity. In the hospital that I work in, any baby born less than 35 weeks and less than 2,000 grams is going to automatically go to the NICU. This is for a couple of reasons. Um, the two biggest reasons are any baby born less than 35 weeks is typically gonna have a hard time maintaining their temperature on the outside of the womb. So they're used to this nice warm environment and their bodies are just not quite ready to have to do all the work on its own. So temperature instability is gonna be one reason a baby less than 35 weeks would need to go to the NICU. The other is gonna be feeding. A lot of times those babies are not gonna come out being able to take a bottle or breastfeed well enough to keep up those calorie requirements. So that's another reason a baby born less than 35 weeks is gonna to need to go to the NICU. The next most common reason a baby of any age is gonna to go to the NICU is gonna be respiratory problems. Typically, that's one of the biggest admission reasons that we see both in premature infants as well as term infants. A lot of times, it's just hard for them to transition going from inside the womb where they don't really have to breathe on their own or, or provide their own oxygen to coming outside and having to do all of those things by themselves. Another common reason a baby is admitted to the NICU is just because they're sick. They have some sort of infection. Now, this is at no fault usually to the mom, but it's just something that happens. We see this in premature infants as well as term babies. A good example might be if mom's water breaks and it's been broken for a, an extended period of time. This might put a baby at higher risk for developing some sort of infection. And this is simply because the sterile environment they've been living in is no longer sterile once the water breaks. So this is gonna put them at a higher risk for infection. Another common reason a baby might be admitted to the NICU is going to be because they can't maintain their blood sugar. We call this hypoglycemia. You're typically gonna see this with babies who are born prematurely, as well as those who are born term, but have been born from a mother who might have diabetes. This might be type two diabetes, or this might be gestational diabetes. Either way, when the baby comes out, they've been used to getting certain levels of sugar and insulin from mom, and when they come out, their little bodies are just not quite able to maintain those numbers and provide their own insulin. So those numbers start to drop, 
and we kind of have to intervene for them. Sometimes this might look like them having an IV where we actually provide sugar water for them to maintain that until their body can do it on their own, as well as you know, helping them feed, whether it be with a bottle or whether that be with a little tube we insert in their nose that goes into their tummy. Another common reason a baby is admitted to the NICU is because of jaundice. Now we see this in both the premature and term populations of infants. Pretty much all premature infants are gonna be treated for jaundice because they're at an even higher risk than term babies, but a lot of term babies have to be treated as well. I would say all babies have some level of jaundice, but just those that have high levels of jaundice are the ones that need to be treated. Sometimes they can treat this on the floor where mom is at, but sometimes they do have to be admitted to the NICU just because it's gonna take a couple of days for us to get those numbers down. The most common treatment for this is gonna be those little blue lights that you'll see. Um, we call them Billy lights. So we put those lights over the baby and that helps break down all of those old red blood cells which is what is causing the yellowing of the skin and those high bilirubin numbers. Now these are just a few of the reasons, a few of the most common reasons a baby might be admitted to the NICU. Of course, there are several others, um, but these are the big ones. The next little topic I wanna jump into is just basic equipment that you're gonna see in the NICU. Now there's gonna be tons of other equipment I'm not gonna cover in this. A whole slew of respiratory equipment, which is its own video in itself, as well as things that might be providing other life-saving measures. But these are the basics that you're gonna see on every baby when you walk into the NICU. The first of those being a monitor. Now we monitor the baby's heart rate and rhythm as well as how fast they're breathing with leads. So we put a lead on each side of the chest and one on their abdomen. And this is gonna provide those numbers for us. It's gonna provide that heart rate and kind of what the rhythm looks like as well as how fast this baby is breathing. These are very important numbers that we monitor 24 hours a day in babies. Another really important number is gonna be the oxygen level. We do this with a pulse ox. So you might see a little red sticky probe that we wrap around baby's foot or arm, and this is gonna give us that number. It's gonna give us a reading of the amount of oxygen that is in the baby's body. This is how we you know, manage the baby's respiratory equipment. We can go up or down on oxygen needs based on what that number tells us. The final number is gonna be a blood pressure. Now we can monitor blood pressure a couple of different ways in the NICU, but the gold standard and way we can monitor it on every baby is gonna be with the blood pressure cuff. It looks just like the blood pressure cuff you and I use, but on a much, much smaller scale. Like I said, there's a ton of other equipment that I'm not gonna cover, but this is the basics. This is what you're gonna see on any baby, no matter what reason they might be admitted to the NICU. The last little topic I want to cover is care providers. So what types of healthcare professionals are going to be on your baby's team caring for your baby 24 hours a day? Obviously, I'm a nurse, so I'm going to start there. You're going to have registered nurses in the NICU. We're the ones that provide the majority of care for your baby. Alongside us is going to be a respiratory therapist. They are golden in the NICU as well. Nurses and respiratory therapists work side by side 24 hours a day to care for your baby. They're gonna be in charge of all of the respiratory equipment. Now nurses do use the respiratory equipment, but we're not solely responsible for it. Your respiratory therapist is gonna know a lot more about that equipment than your nurse does. So they're gonna set it up and they're gonna maintain it and adjust it based on your baby's needs. The next group of care providers I wanna talk about are gonna be your medical team. So this is gonna include your medical doctor, your nurse practitioners, and your physician's assistants. So the highest level is gonna be the doctor. Um, they're called neonatologists. They've studied even longer to be able to care for critically ill infants. Most of them are gonna actually be double board certified. So they're gonna be certified in neonatology as well as pediatrics. You have a mid-level of care, which is gonna be your physician's assistants and nurse practitioners. Now these two types of care providers can do almost everything a doctor does. There is a few things I think that, and it might be different in every NICU, that these care providers can't do, but the NICU that I work in, the nurse practitioners can do almost everything that doctors do. In my hospital, we have someone on call in the hospital 24 hours a day. Now it may be a nurse practitioner or it may be the neonatologist, but someone is always there. And this is because babies don't stop at 5 p.m. They're still born in the middle of the night and they still get sick in the middle of the night. So we need them there all the time to help us care for these critically ill babies. The next group I wanna talk about is gonna be 
people like your speech language pathologist, your physical therapist, and occupational therapist. These professions are gonna work closely with your baby with their needs as they grow. A speech language pathologist is gonna help with feeding. So once a baby gets to that level where they need help with feeding, that's where a speech pathologist is gonna come in. We also have physical therapists and occupational therapists as well. So a lot of times babies might have issues where they need special stretches and special exercises to help them grow appropriately. And that's where your physical therapist and occupational therapist come in. The last little group is gonna be your dietitians and your pharmacists and lactation consultants. So dietitians are gonna help write the right amount of calories for the baby. They're gonna look at the baby's weight every day and make those calorie adjustments accordingly. Your pharmacists are gonna work alongside both the dietitian and the, and the care provider, like your doctor, to write the fluid orders every day. So what baby needs as far as nutrients, if they are on IV fluids. Um, these are typically written for each baby every day and are adjusted based on baby's weight. Another care provider you're gonna see in the NICU is gonna be a tech or secretary. Now the NICU that I work in, we don't have techs that do direct patient care, but we do have secretaries and they are worth their weight in gold. They keep us going and they keep the NICU running. While they don't do direct patient care, they do keep all of our supplies stocked, they keep our parents happy and they help communicate with parents, especially during um, critical times with babies. They're so helpful for us. And like I said, they really just keep us going and keep the NICU running day in and day out. Thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I love the NICU and I love what I do and I'm gonna be doing more videos about the NICU in the future. So if you did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below. Hope you have a great day.